every evening before the meditation, we have that chant and goodwill. Goodwill for ourselves, goodwill for the people around us. And it's not just a chant. Try to develop the attitude that goes along with the chant. Really but wishing for your own true happiness, wishing for the true happiness of the people around you. Because it's one of those thoughts that doesn't have to have a limit. The more true happiness you have, you're not taking anything else away from anyone else. The more they have, they're not taking anything away from you. And it's good to be able to put the mind in an unlimited state like that. The Buddha talks about greed, anger, and delusion as things that make a limit. Pamana karana is the Pali term. As long as we allow greed and anger and delusion to hold sway in our minds, we're limiting ourselves. And then there's that whole question of self-identification. That too is a limit. The Buddha says, whatever you identify with yourself, and whatever you identify as yourself, that's a limit on you as well. You identify with your body, you're suddenly limited to your body. You identify with feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness, you're limited by those things as well. So as we're meditating, we're trying to strip away the limitations that we place on ourselves. Those limitations are much more confining than the ones that people place on us. So we counteract them with limitless thoughts, thoughts of goodwill. Any of what they call the sublime abidings are also called limitless attainments. That's one. In other words, while your your mind is dwelling on the idea of goodwill for yourself, goodwill for other people. You're not making any opening for greed, any opening for anger to come into the mind. And that way you have to open things up, open up the windows in your head, let the air come in. And that puts you in the right frame, for, frame of mind for meditation, focusing on the breath. Because after all, why are you here just watching your breath coming in going out when you could be doing so many other things? It's because you want true happiness. You've seen the happiness that other things in the world have to offer. And it's not much. It comes and it goes. And John Swat often liked to ask, the sensual pleasures you had last year, where are they now? Well, oh, they're gone. And what have they left behind? They've left behind a few memories. Sometimes they haven't left even that much behind. There's so much you forget. And of the things you do remember, what kind of memories are they? Either you miss those things and wish they could come back again, or you think of what you had to do in order to get those things, and sometimes there's regret involved with that as well. So you realize that that's not the, the direction you want to go in if you want to look for true happiness. Psychologists talk about how Human beings are really tend to forget. They've looked someplace for happiness and they didn't find it there, and they go back and they look again. And then they go back and they look again, as if somehow it'll spring up. There's that story about the man who was eating a whole bushel of peppers and crying, and people asking, Why are you crying? He says, Well, because they're so hot. He says, Why are you eating them if they're hot? And he says, well, I'm waiting for a sweet one. That's the way sensual pleasures are in life. We keep hoping that a sweet one will come along, forgetting that, that it's what we do that determines the pain and pleasure in the mind, the stress and the ease in the mind, the sorrow and the happiness in the mind. It comes from our actions. It doesn't come from things. So as we're meditating, we're learning how to focus on our actions to see what we're doing and where they're 
slips in our awareness, lapses in our mindfulness that make, allow us to do things that are not in our own best interest. This is why meditation focuses so much on mindfulness and alertness. The Buddha once said that these are the two most helpful things in the mind. They're pretty basic, mindfulness, keeping something in mind. That's a basic, basic skill. It goes way back. Alertness, just noticing what's happening around you. We have these things already to a certain extent, but we've never fully developed them to see how far they can take us. So as we're meditating, that's what we're doing, developing these two most helpful qualities in our mind. Keep the breath in mind and watch the breath. Be sensitive to the breath. The more sensitive you are, the more you see, not only in terms of the breath, but also in terms of the mind. Because sensitive, sensitivity requires being fully present, also being very open to noticing what's coming in through your nerve endings. Think of all the nerves in your body opening up. Keep that picture in mind for a little while, from the brain all the way down to the feet, down the shoulders and the arms, out to the hands. Think of your whole nervous system opening up, and then noticing what you sense in terms of the breath, how the breath feels, how the process of breathing feels. In order to do that, you have to be fully present. And in being fully present, you can bring all the mind along with you. When you're not really paying that much attention to the present moment, there are lots of little hidden corners where other things are going on. But the more fully you can immerse yourself in the present moment, the less room there is for those hidden corners. This is why being sensitive to the breath also allows you to be more and more sensitive to the mind. So you begin to see what the mind does. The Buddhist approach to dealing with the problems in the mind is not so much tracing things back to what you did as a child, the way they do in psychotherapy. It's looking at your habits right now. They keep coming back again and again and again. And you don't have to ask, well, what happened when I was a child? Why did this happen? You just look at what you're doing to see the suffering that you're causing yourself, or the lack of openness and honesty in the mind. What's that doing to the mind? And do you want to do that? Do you continue wanting to do that as you see the stress that it's causing? And sometimes this may seem threatening, opening up these hidden boxes, but as you're dealing with the breath, working with the breath and making it comfortable. You're also developing an attitude of gentleness, being gentle with the breath, not forcing it too much, just allowing it to feel really good. And that gentleness, as John Suat used to say, it's a, it's a paradoxical gentleness. The more gentle you are with the breath, the more solid the mind gets. The more solid the mind is, the more it can really look into what's going on. So it doesn't have to be afraid of things that get dug up. It doesn't have to deal in denial. It can acknowledge, okay, yes, there's that in the mind. And if it's something you can deal with right now, you do. And if you realize I'm not up for that yet, well, you, at least you know it's there. And you know that as you develop the meditation, you'll eventually develop the skills to deal with whatever it is that comes up. So it's a simple exercise. But it does a lot of good things for the mind. Puts the mind in a really good place so that you can see what you're doing. We get into the present moment not because the present moment is a wonderful moment. A lot of things that happen in the present are not wonderful at all. But the present moment is an important moment because it's where we're making decisions that shape our life. Decisions that were made in past present moments are things you can't change anymore. They're done. Decisions you're going to make in the future will depend a lot on what you're doing right now. So this is the most important place to be. The world tells us that 
things that other people are doing on the other side of the world. That's the most important thing going on. But you don't have to believe that, because your world is being shaped by your actions right now. And you want to understand this process of acting. What does it mean for the mind to act? What's the difference between a simple event in the mind, say the appearance of a, of a feeling, and an action, the intention? How are intentions formed? What goes into it? What kind of perceptions? What kind of questions that you ask yourself? What kind of contact in the mind and the body forces your decisions? Many times you'll find yourself doing something, and if you're really attentive, you say, wait a minute, where did that come from? The decision seemed to have been made by itself, and little tiny things would trigger it. That's what you've got to look into, so you can be more sensitive and actually see the trigger. Many times you'll find that the trigger doesn't seem really worth it. Why on earth did that trigger spark that intention, spark that action? This is probably one of the scariest things about our own minds. Our minds are shaping our lives, and yet we don't know how and why they're doing it. So as we meditate, we're putting ourselves in a better position to see the how and to see the why and get more control over what those actions are. But before you can see the movements of the mind, you have to be very still. So this is how we get the mind there, focusing on the breath, being mindful of the breath, being alert to the breath. trying to immerse ourselves in the breath as much as we can in the present moment. The more immersed you are, the more difficult it is to pull away and start wandering someplace else. So allow yourself to immerse totally in the body right here, right now. Breath coming in, breath going out, whole body breathing in, whole body breathing out. Aware of the whole body, the whole nervous system opening up, all your blood vessels. All the little tiny, tiny muscles in your blood vessels, allow them to relax. So the breath energy has a free rein to flow anywhere in the body at all. This is a very immediate way of showing goodwill to yourself. Because it's both a good place to stay and it's a process of developing the mindfulness and alertness you're going to need to learn even more as the meditation progresses. <laughs>